Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's get cracking. So, I've already loaded my object. I'm in the shading tab. I've got my principal shader applied and I've got viewport shading enabled. This shader is going to work best in dark scenes, so I'm going to turn off the scene lights. Currently, you can't see anything. I'll change that in a minute. Now, one thing that I am going to change in the principal shader is the transmission is going to go all the way up. Roughness is going to go all the way down and clear coat roughness is going to go all the way down. Next, I'm going to get a principled volume shader. I'm going to plug that into the volume of the material output. We're going to put the emission strength at 500. Boom, there's your ball. And we're going to put the density at 35. May increase this color a little bit. There we go. Um, everything else is going to stay the same. Next up, we're going to need a color ramp. That's going to go into the emission color of the principled volume. We're going to move the black to position 0.5. The white, we're actually going to sh uh, change to like a neon pink color. And we're going to move it to position 0.65, maybe 0.55. Yeah, we'll go there. Next up, I need a noise texture. So we're pressing Shift A every time we're looking for a shader, selecting it and press Enter, and then setting it in place with the left click. Factor from that is going to go in the color ramp, and you can already see things happening here. Scale we're going to leave as it is. Detail we're going to put up to 15, and the roughness to 0.75. Next up, we're going to search for and apply a Musgrave texture. The height from this will go into the vector of the noise texture, and you can already see some cool things happening there. Scale I'm setting to 2, detail to 1, dimension to 1, and whatever that said, lacunarity to 1. And that's kind of cool look. Next up we need to add another noise texture. And to this one we're going to apply a mapping node and a texture coordinate as well. In between the noise texture and the Musgrave texture, we're going to add a mix RGB shader. We'll take the color from the noise texture into color one of that mix RGB. And we're going to take the vector from the mapping node into color two. Make sure to change over your texture coordinate to object. We'll increase the factor on the mix shader to 0.75. And on the third noise uh, noise texture, we'll change the scale to 2, detail to 10, roughness to 0, and distortion to 0. OK, so we've got all sorts going on here. What we are actually going to do now is select everything here, press Shift D to duplicate it, and bring it down. We're then going to select both principal volumes and press Control 0 to get us a mix shader. Now, for this second principal volume, we're going to increase the density to 70. We're going to change the color to 
color to a much darker gray. Probably about there. We're going to change this hot pink color to maybe like a neon -y blue. We're going to change the position slightly. So let's say 0.65 here and 0.6 for the black. For the first noise texture that you come across working backwards, we're going to change the detail to zero and the roughness to one. For the Musgrave texture, scale to three, detail to 1.6, dimension to two, and lucanarity to two. The mix shader to 0.675. And then on the final noise texture, increase the detail to 15 and the distortion to 2.4. And there you have your plasma shader. Now the factor controls how much of each of those shaders goes in. It's not a huge difference, but just leave it at 0.5 and that'll be kind of cool. You can mess around with all these settings for all sorts of different effects, but I'm just gonna send this off to render. I'm using cycles, GPU, uh, 1024 samples. I might increase the light bounces. Um, diffuse, glossy, transmission, Volume we'll put up to 8 and transparent we'll put up to 8. Essentially we're working with a glass orb with bits and pieces in it. Okay and now we'll send that off to render. Whoops, I've just noticed I've actually left my light stand on. So I need to go to my scene scene collection objects and turn off the area lights that I've used in this scene and prevent them from rendering. And there we go, our plasma ball complete. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe for notifications of new videos. In the meantime, thanks for watching.